Hey guys, welcome back. Today's video is going to be on this makeup tutorial, which is like my version of just an everyday, simple, neutral, everyday makeup glam. Obviously, this is not natural. This is a, not a no makeup makeup look. This is just a traditional neutral look. I walk you through step by step and I let you guys know what I do, why I did it. I used all drugstore and affordable makeup products. I also used all drugstore and affordable makeup brushes as well. So I really hope this is helpful and let me know also if you want me to continue to doing like drugstore beginner videos as well and I'll definitely keep doing them for you guys so hope you like it and let's just go ahead and get started okay so whenever I start my makeup routine I always like to do my eyebrows first I feel like it just makes the rest of the process just so much easier and I love doing my eyes and stuff once I already have my brows done also please don't mind my nails I desperately need to get them done I get a lot of questions about how do you do your brows? What's the easiest way to fill them in, etc., etc.? Obviously, that depends on your brows. You can see mine are really sparse. I don't have a lot of hairs, and they're very light compared to like my hair and stuff. So, if you have really awesome, beautiful, full, thick brows, you don't really need to do much, in my opinion. But like, if your brows are like me, the easiest way that I have found to get them to look semi like you know like they're related because my brows are like two completely different shapes I don't know if you can really tell I feel like over the years they've gotten a little bit better but they are two different shapes but the best way that I have found for me is to outline my brows first and then fill them in because when I outline them I kind of get the shape that I want already as an outline so the way I like to do it first is starting off with a pencil as I've shown you guys a million times before with a pencil it just makes it that much easier so I'm currently loving this one from wet and wild it's the retractable brow pencil this kind of reminds me of the Anastasia brow definer as you can see it has like that angled brush tip at the top and it also comes with a spoolie so it's really great because it's super convenient so basically what I'm gonna do is just follow along with the natural shape that I already have with my eyebrows So you're basically just doing tiny strokes to outline them. This is a really great pencil. It's very creamy, super easy to work with, but it's not too creamy. It's not too stiff or hard on the brows. Like, it's a really great pencil for the price. I'm really loving it. I've been using it ever since I started using it. It's only been like a week and a half or a week, but I'm really impressed. So once I get that, that's pretty much like the main thing that I like to do. Then I just fully through them. I always like to extend my brow tail a little bit further than what they normally are because I like my brow tail to be longer than like my eyes if that makes sense because naturally my brows they're not super long so I feel like giving them like that longer look it kind of I don't know I feel like it kind of makes your eyes like it just makes everything like more like whoosh. it's just kind of an illusion with makeup and that's why I always like extending the brow tail a little bit and I like to do it with pencils because when you do that, it kind of gives it like that sharp look, you can see, and it looks just, I don't know, better. All right, next for pomade, I love the NYX Tame & Frame, I love the Salon Perfect one, I love the Ardell one, which you can find at Sally's Beauty Supply. There's a ton of different really awesome brow pomades at the drugstore. I know a lot of people love the e.l.f. one. Um, I've tried the Ulta brand one from Ulta. There's just a ton. I feel like the drugstore has really evolved with their brow products, but this is just the one that I currently have and I love. This one I have in the shade Espresso, and some of you guys were telling me that yours dried out a little bit. If your pomades ever dry out quickly, just add a couple drops of baby oil, mix it around with a Q-tip, and then you'll be good. I like to use an angled brush. This one's from e.l.f. It's one of my favorites. I always use it. Like literally every single time I do my makeup so this is like two dollars and I love just the brush tip of it there's so many brow brushes out there but this one's perfection because it's not too big but it's not too small it's just like it's perfect so what I'm gonna do is just dip in here and I basically just fill in basically the middle part of my brows because they're already outlined so I feel like it just makes it so easy once I get to the inner corner of my brows, I kind of like to do tiny strokes going up a little bit. And then I just distribute the rest of the product towards the rest of the brow. So eyebrows are tricky because everybody has different shapes and stuff. But I feel like this is the best way to do it, at least for me so if you have eyebrows like myself I think this would help a lot and my favorite part about doing my brows is fixing them up with concealer you can see this one looks very jagged very messed up it just makes a huge difference when it comes to 
the overall brow appearance. So my favorite is the NYX Full Coverage Concealer in the shade Beige. I personally don't like this concealer for underneath my eyes. It's a little too heavy, so I like it just for carving out the brows. So I'm going to use this angled brush that I got from BH Cosmetics. I got this in a set. It's called the Dot Collection. I purchased this like last year and I still use these brushes. They're really great quality. So I'm basically just going to dip into the concealer and I kind of like lift my brow up when I do the bottom part. And then I literally just carve it out. So I'm like going right underneath my brow and I'm just applying the concealer there. And then I do the same thing on the top. I don't do as much concealer on the top, but that's pretty much it. To blend out the concealer, I'm using this beauty sponge from Maybelline. I love this sponge if you're looking for a good alternative to the beauty blender. This is amazing. It's so squishy. And I think this is like five or six bucks. It's super affordable. You can find it at like Walmart or Target. So I'm just blending out the concealer. When choosing a concealer to carve out your brows, I recommend using one that's like your skin tone or maybe like one shade lighter. You don't want to use like a straight up like white concealer because then it makes it really difficult to look natural when you're blending in your foundation and everything. So like for instance, this shade beige is like my perfect shade right now. And then in the summer, I use the same color and it's like a little bit lighter. But once I blend it out, it blends in perfectly. So only go a shade or two. No, go a shade lighter. I was going to say a shade or two, but even two shades can be a little unnatural looking so all right so next I'm gonna move into eyeshadow primer I actually just used the same concealer and I just apply it all over my lid you can totally use any concealer that you have and just apply it all over and it acts as a really good eyeshadow primer now I personally always like to set my eyeshadow base but I've seen like there's like a new trend where like you don't set your eyeshadow base and it makes the colors appear more vibrant and pigmented it's funny because when I was in high school, I never used to set my lid, um, and my colors on my lid would be very harsh. It's because, obviously, I didn't really know much about makeup then. Um, I definitely have evolved over the years, but I personally always like to, and I think if you're a beginner, it makes the process a little bit easier because the colors go on a little bit smoother, and I don't know, I just personally like it. I think especially if you have oily lids, it's super important to set. So I'm going to just use the Wet n Wild Press Powder. I have this one in the shade Warm Light. I'm using one of my favorite brushes. This is the e.l.f. Flawless Concealer Brush, and I'm just going to set the lid area. You can use translucent powder, a white eyeshadow, anything that you have will work. For eyeshadow today, I'm going to be using the new Wet n Wild Comfort Zone palette. They have repackaged and like revamped their eyeshadow palettes and I am so happy about it because Wet n Wild eyeshadows are amazing and I loved all their old eyeshadow palettes and the Comfort Zone palette was amazing, but I love how this one comes with like matte transition colors. It makes it so much easier to do a makeup look. You don't have to reach for a million different eyeshadow palettes to create a look. So I'm actually going to just start off with this color right here, which is a really nice orange transition shade. I'm going to just pick up my NYX blending brush, which you can find at Ulta, Target, and I'm just going to be applying that shade right into my crease. So whenever you're doing, let me zoom in, whenever you're doing a look, you always want to start off with a transition color. It can be a shade darker than you, it can be two shades, it doesn't really matter as long as it's like matte and it's just a lighter, very neutral shade. So when I blend colors in my crease, I'm pretty much just placing the shadow right in the area and kind of just blending back and forth. The motion with your hand should be literally like this. Like just literally back and forth. I like to personally apply it all over my lid, in my crease, blending it up. I like to kind of stop right below my eyebrow because I like to put a brow bone highlight right there in that area. So I like to keep that area clean. So in blending, literally just keep on blending back and forth from inner corner to outer corner all over the lid. It doesn't really have to be really precise because we're going to go over top with other shades anyway, but a transition color is really important because if you're using darker colors, you want to make sure there's like a gradient in between the light and the dark shades and it doesn't look really choppy and harsh. So it's just essential. And that's pretty much it. Sometimes it looks like you have a lot of colors in your crease by just blending. And if you add more of the same color, I'll show you. It can look like a really smoky look and like you have a lot going on when in all reality it's the same color. So again, you want to just start by blending very lightly and kind of just working your way all over the lid in the crease. I'm right handed so I always find myself to do the right side of my face a lot better than the left side of my face. Like I know that's weird but 
like on this eye, rather so than just going a little bit more harsh like I do on this eye, I like to start off in doing circular motions. So literally taking it and doing this, I'll show you. That is the motion that I am doing with my hand on this eye. These colors are super pigmented, so just keep that in mind also. Whenever you're doing looks with any type of eyeshadow, make sure you're tapping off the excess because if not, it can be very difficult to work with eyeshadows. Once you go too hard with the eyeshadows, it can be difficult to clean up mistakes. So starting off with a little bit of product at a time it makes the process so much easier. I want to deepen up my crease a little bit, so I'm going to be using this brush. It's pretty much like a fluffy brush, but it's a little smaller than the one I was just using. It's from BH Cosmetics. So what I'm going to do is take this other transition color here. It's more of like a deeper red-brown color. Wrapping off the excess because you can see there's so much pigment coming off of that. And what I'm going to do with this is just define my crease a little bit and just make the outer part of my crease a little bit more smoky and dark. So whenever I do this, I like to use brushes like this because I feel like it diffuses the product a lot better. And if you're using a smaller brush, it can look a little bit harsh. Since this is just like an everyday neutral look, I don't really want anything to look like a defined cut crease or anything like that. So brushes like this are the best. So what I'm going to do is just take this color and concentrate it right on the outer part of my crease. And the way I'm doing this is doing very tiny back and forth motion so your motion should look like this when you're you moving your hand I know it seems kind of silly like trying to show you guys how I blend the shadow but hopefully it's helpful but literally just going like this back and forth so back and forth really tiny little strokes and again I'm adding product as I go so I'm tapping off the excess and adding a little bit more product circular motions, blending it upwards a little bit. Just like that. So you have a little bit of a defined crease, but it's not too dark and it's blended. extra product that I do have from the crease I very lightly dust it onto the rest of my lid area not bringing it towards this area kind of just like towards the middle of my lid just to again give it like that smooth gradient effect so it doesn't look choppy so once we have that color blended in I'm going to go in with my NYX blending brush we were using earlier with no additional product on this I'm basically just going to run it through my crease once again just to blend out those edges doing the same motions that I was just using very lightly. If you guys can't get your hands on this NYX blending brush, the another really great brush that I love is the Wet n Wild blending brush. It's pretty much honestly the same exact thing. Um, it looks like this. You can find this like pretty much anywhere, Walmart, Target, super affordable. They're very similar as you can see. The next one is a little bit more fluffy, it has more hairs, but they both do the job. So just in case you can't find this one. What I'm going to do is apply a color in the inner tear duct. You can totally leave the look like this, but I, you know, for a little extra pop. I'm going to go in and I'm going to add this shade right in here, which is like a really light pinky mauve toned shade. As you can see, it's so pretty cannot go wrong with wet and wild shadows do you see that it's gorgeous so i'm gonna use a flat shader brush this one is from ColourPop, and i wish these had names but they don't i just got them from their website like in that brush kit that they had so what i'm gonna do is just dip my brush into here and i always like to spray my brush after i dip in the shadow it just makes the shadow pop a little bit more and i do this with all my shadows high-end drugstore for the most part so i'm using my nyx first base primer spray I do about maybe two to three sprays and then I just pack on the color. So whenever I'm packing on color, I really like to literally do packing motions. Like I'm packing and like pushing the shadow onto my lid more so than like rubbing it out because it gives you a more, I don't want to say full coverage look, but it makes the shadow appear just better <laughs> versus when you just like swipe the color. So packing motions. So now to highlight the brow bone, I'm going to be picking up this tiny brush. This one is also from Wet n Wild. It's from their new collection. I am obsessed with these brushes. This one's the P10 brush. You can use this for a lot of different things. You can use this for smudging eyeshadow on your lower lash line, or in my case, I'm going to use it as a brow bone highlight. So I'm going to just pick up this color right here. It's like a shimmery light cream, and I'm going to top off the excess like always, 
And I'm going to just apply that right onto my brow bone. And actually, I want that to pop a little bit more, so I'm going to spray my brush again. Oh, yeah. That's gorgeous. Do you see how, like, beaming that is? And more blending. <laughs> Always make sure you're blending in your brow bone highlight together because sometimes I forget, to be honest, like if I'm in a rush and you can really see like that harsh transition between your crease and your brow bone highlight and it doesn't really look appealing. So always keep a blending brush handy. Personally, for me, I think winged liner isn't beginner friendly. Like, I mean, if you can do winged liner, that's awesome. And I know it takes a lot of practice, but for an everyday person, trying to do their makeup I totally get it wind liner can be very overwhelming so seriously what I'm gonna do is go in with a black eye coal this one is from LA girl Rimmel has a really good one uh, NYX has really great pencils as well so just trying to give you guys different brands just in case you can't find this specific one but this one's in the shade very black it's just a really traditional black eye coal so what I'm gonna do is just line my upper lid area very lightly not too dark and I'm not gonna do a wing again because I don't really think that's beginner friendly but that's just my opinion I'm gonna do it very close to my lash line just to give it a little bit something extra especially since I'm going in with falsies it's just gonna give it a better look so totally optional you don't have to do this you can totally just apply mascara you're, and you're good to go but it's just personal preference and I don't recommend pooling on your lid it's such a bad habit of mine um, it causes wrinkles I know it's so bad don't do it, but I'm doing it because it makes my life easier. So I'm literally dragging the eyeliner so close to my lower lash line that it's going to look basically like I don't have a lot of eyeliner on, if that makes sense. It just gives it kind of like a darker look. Something else that I don't really show on camera, but I think it's super important. It's just one of those things that sometimes I forget or I just think it's kind of creepy also to show, but I always like to line my upper waterline, especially if you're doing falsies or mascara in general, because sometimes you have like this gap right in between here. Do you see that? And it, when you have falsies on, you can kind of see it sometimes and it doesn't look good. It's happened to me so many times. So what I like to do is just lift my eye up and line my upper waterline. So I'm like barely pressing on this eyeliner. It's a very creamy black coal, which I feel like also makes it that much easier for me, but I'm like barely pressing it because I don't want it to be really harsh. I just wanted to, you know, give it a little bit something extra. And I recommend doing this with a pencil because I feel like it's a little bit less harsh than like with a liquid liner. And it's just easier to kind of get in there and kind of give it like a smudged out look. So then I'm gonna go in with mascara. This is one of my favorites, the L'Oreal Voluminous Carbon Black. I also love the Wet n Wild Max Volume Plus in the pink packaging, that mascara is amazing. Those are probably like my two all time favorites that I've repurchased so many times, but I'm just gonna go in with this. At this time, you could totally, like if you don't know how to apply falsies or you don't like falsies, you can just do mascara and then like you're good to go. But I'm gonna do it because I feel like once you start applying falsies, you don't go back. I know that's really bad, but I'm gonna just apply a quick coat of mascara because it makes your falsies blend in with your real lashes so much better. Even if you have short lashes like myself, it's essential to always do this because it makes a huge difference. So I'm just doing a quick coat. One of my favorite pairs of lashes and the lashes that I feel like a lot of you guys should own, especially if you're a beginner or if you like just everyday lashes, are these from Kiss. They're the Kiss number 11 lashes. They are amazing. I like these better than the Demi Wispies. They're a little bit just like fluffier, just prettier. You can get this pack at Walmart. It's like eight or nine dollars and you get a lot of packs as you can see. So I like it. So what I like to do with my falsies, I always do this off camera, but obviously I'm going to show you guys today. I do have a video, by the way, on how I apply them if you want like super in depth. But what I like to do is take a pair of tweezers. These are from Revlon. I got these at Target. And I'm just going to pick out the lashes because I don't want to ruin them. So I just pick them out right from the pack, just like this. So you can see they're very natural. They have a thin band, so they're super easy to apply. And I'm just going to take my Kiss Strip Lash Adhesive. Again, this is from Walmart. It's my favorite lash glue. This is all that I use. I like it because it comes with a brush. So if you're a beginner, it's super easy to literally take the glue and rub it right onto the lash band. This is the key that I feel like a lot of people forget. You have to let your lash glue dry. When it's a thin band, I usually will let it dry for like 30 seconds. I'll kind of like swing it back and forth, blow on it a little bit. I like to literally take the tweezer 
and literally place the lash right onto my eye so you can see this is not on all the way the tweezers help a ton because then I will take the outer corner and really press it down then I take the inner corner press it down make sure you don't poke, poke yourself in the eye or anything and then I take the tweezers and I do this but I do it to my eye or to the lashes because I really want them to blend in and to be pressed down and you can see these lashes they're so natural like really these are definitely perfect for every single day and then what I like to do, obviously the glue still needs to dry, don't worry, it will in like a couple minutes. But I like to take the back of my tweezers and I like to press them against my lashes, kind of bringing the lash upwards. It kind of fluffs up the lashes a little bit and I feel like it makes your eyes look a little bit more like awake and open. Whereas if you kind of leave them down, it kind of can make your eyes look a little bit droopy. Alright, so now for the face, the fun part, that's my favorite part about doing my makeup. So I always usually like to prime, I feel like it makes a huge difference, but it also depends on my skin. So I have combo skin and some days I feel like I just don't need to prime. So if you have oily skin, definitely of course go with a mattifying primer, I mean it's kind of like the basics of makeup. And then if you have dry skin, you want to do something dewy, something hydrating, that way your makeup doesn't flake throughout the day. So one of my favorite primers currently, I'm loving the L'Oreal Infallible Matte Lock primer it just looks like this I really like this primer because it doesn't over dry my skin but I still get that matte finish so as I just mentioned I have combo skin so I like to just apply this on the areas where I get oily which is my t-zone other than that my skin is pretty normal sometimes it can get dry so it really just depends but these are the areas where I feel like I need the primer the most then I usually like to do this if I'm using a heavier foundation or if I know that I'm going to be wearing my makeup for a long period of time and I want to avoid that cakey look. I'm using the NYX First Base Primer Spray. This isn't really a setting spray, so it's not going to make your makeup last longer or anything. It's just going to help for your makeup to look better overall on your skin and kind of just like melt into your skin instead of looking like cakey, like you have a ton of layers of foundation on. So I like to just do a quick spray. This, in my opinion, is a really good alternative to the Smashbox Primer Water if you don't want to spend a lot of money on that this is great and also a really good tip with your primers is you always want to let them sit for at least I would say like two or three minutes I know that seems kind of long especially if you're in a rush but then the primers are actually gonna do what they're supposed to do whereas if you just apply your primer and then do your foundation really quick it's not really going to do exactly what you want it to do so just wait a little bit check your phone maybe go to the bathroom do what you got to do just anything to let the primer settle into your skin for a little bit today for foundation I'm using this one from Maybelline it's my current favorite it's the Superstay full coverage foundation and I I actually have two shades because I haven't found like my perfect match yet um, when I was ordering these online I didn't know which to get so I just got both so I got the shade 128 and 220 love these because they come with a pump these are super full coverage and I would say this is definitely one of those foundations that is perfect if you have combo or oily skin because the finish of it is more of like a natural matte finish this is definitely heavy-duty coverage but the reason I like this so much is because even though it is heavy-duty I do feel like you can get away with wearing it on an everyday basis but for me personally the reason I'm using it today is because I do have some acne that I need to cover up on my face a little bit of scarring I've been breaking out so I want something a little bit more heavy duty if you don't like super full coverage on an everyday basis I recommend going for the LA girl pro coverage foundation I've used this so many times on my channel this is a really great natural finish medium to full coverage foundation so if you have combo oily or dry skin I think you can get away with wearing this but again I'm using the Maybelline one today just because I have some things to cover whenever you're using your foundation you want to make sure you're matching it to your body so like your neck because my face naturally is a little bit lighter than my neck especially like in the summer and stuff so you don't want to just match your face because if you match your face sometimes your face from like washing it exfoliating can just be naturally a little bit lighter so you always want to match your neck I don't really have a tip on like matching your foundation because I always just guess my shade um, I go for foundations that are a little bit more yellowy um, because I do have like an olive skin tone if you're super fair you want to go for things maybe that are a little bit more pinky like it really depends on your skin tone I do know though there's a ton of different like websites where you can find your foundation I've heard of foundation I'm pretty sure that's what it's called where you can like type in your foundation shades and it can give you a bunch of other shades that you could possibly be for different foundations so check out different websites online and stuff and 
there's the alarm. Sometimes what I like to do also is type in the different foundation shades on Google Images and you can see usually a ton of different foundation swatches on different skin tones and that's how I determine my shade. So it's all about trial and error. If you keep your receipt, you can always return or exchange your foundations as well. So keep that in mind. Personally, I think this foundation looks the best with a brush. So I'm using this one from Shop Miss A. You can get this on their website. It's super affordable website. Everything's a dollar. And I got this brush in a brush kit for $10. So with my foundation, when I'm using a brush, I like to really pack in the product. When you pack in the foundation, it gives you that full coverage look. Whereas if you're rubbing the product on your face, you're not really necessarily covering anything up. You're kind of just rubbing the product all over your face, if that makes sense. So I like to really pack it in, especially on areas where I have acne, because if I were just to rub the product, I'm not really covering anything up. I like to personally blend it down a little bit to my neck. I know some people like literally go like all the way down here. I personally don't feel like I need to do that because when I have my foundations, they usually always match the rest of my body. So I don't feel the need to like blend it all the way down to my chest, but that's personal preference. Some people also like to do their ears. I personally never thought about that until I saw people doing it on YouTube, but I feel like my ears look like the same color. Obviously like some people self tan and stuff. so your ears maybe can look a little bit light. All right, so then for concealer, you guys know I love my Ulta Beauty Full Coverage Concealer. A lot of people say Ulta isn't a drugstore though. I beg to differ. I think that is a drugstore in my opinion because they have a drugstore section. So I'm just gonna use my NYX HD Concealer. I actually really love this. I've used this for forever. It's a great concealer. So this one I have in the shade beige and I'm just gonna go ahead and do a triangle underneath my eyes. Now, a lot of people don't understand the concept of this. I personally like doing the triangle because when you blend your concealer upwards, it gives you like that full coverage, bright under eye, which I love. And something that I like to do, because sometimes like my under eye area gets a little dark on this area, is I'll drag the concealer right down on the side of my nose. By the way, I always like to do my eye makeup first to avoid any fallout. That way, when you go in to do your foundation and your concealer, everything looks super flawless and you don't have to worry about having eyeshadow all over your face. And I'll take the concealer, apply a little bit down the bridge of my nose, on the top of my lip. For me personally, my mouth sometimes gets a little like darker on my mouth. So I like to apply concealer around there on my chin and a little bit on my forehead, like right between my brows. Again, going back to the Maybelline sponge, I love how it's angled. I don't know if you can really tell, but it's perfect for blending out concealer. All of these products blend flawlessly. So like you don't need to spend a lot of time doing your makeup. Look up when you're doing your concealer. So you can really get under there and conceal those areas that you need to. And then with the same sponge, I like to go in and kind of just on the other side, blend everything in together. So sometimes with a brush, if you do too much foundation, sometimes that happens to me, it can look a little cakey, a little heavy on your face, especially if you're using a foundation that's full coverage. Or if you're using like two layers of foundation, like just a little bit too much. Then for powder, I'm using this one from Hard Candy. It's the Sheer Envy Bake, Brighten, and Set. It's just a banana powder. I really like this. Makeup Revolution also has a really good one. The Maybelline Fit Me Loose Powder is great. There's a ton of really amazing setting powders at the drugstore. So I like to just apply this right on the back of the lid. And then I'll take the same sponge and I'll just literally dip my sponge into here. A lot of people have asked me before, how do you avoid your concealer from creasing? Personally, my concealer always creases a little bit at least because I have the worst under eye area ever. But one of the things that actually one of you guys taught me, which thank you so much, you know who you are, I love you. If you set from the outer part of your eye to the inner part, it takes away a little bit of the creasy under eye lines. And another thing is you wanna wait a little bit before setting. So I don't like to set the under eye area right away. I like to wait a little bit couple minutes, not more than five minutes, because when you wait a little bit, then right before you're gonna go ahead and set your under eye area, go back with the Beauty Blender and rub away the creases that you may get. And then when you go in to set with your powder, you wanna set from the outer part to the inner part. And if you're using a brush, it's like the same thing, basically, from the outer part to the inner part. And you can get this powder at Walmart, by the way. With the same sponge, I'm just gonna go ahead and set where I applied my concealer. So I li literally instantly will just wipe it away and I'm using this brush from Wet n Wild. It's the P70 powder brush. 
I always like to set my cheeks because when I apply my blush, my bronzer, everything, it goes on 10 times smoother versus when I don't. So I'm using again the same Wet n Wild powder that I used to set my lid area earlier in the shade Warm Light. I'm gonna just take it on the same brush that I just used. I'm gonna really pack on the powder and then I rub it in. So pack, rub. Again, gives you that full coverage look, but it doesn't rub away your foundation. So pack, rub lightly. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and set my brows really quick. This is super important, especially now because I applied all that powder. I don't want powdery eyebrows. I'm using the Maybelline Fiber Volumizer. I love this in the shade Deep Brown. It makes my brows just look really full. And I love just the little like spatula. I don't know if you can really tell. It's like a flat spatula wand, but it's perfect for the brows. For bronzer, on an everyday basis, I feel like especially if you're a beginner, you don't want to do intense contouring and all that. It's just overwhelming and it's too much. Personally for me, I don't even like to do that on a daily anyway. So I'm using this Makeup Revolution Ultra Bronze Bronzer. And this one's just in the shade Ultra Bronze. But I love this because it's so versatile. It's not too cool. It's not too warm. It's just the perfect bronzer. So you can get this at... So I'm just basically going to go in. Pointed powder brush. And what I like to do with my bronzer is chisel my cheeks a little bit. Kind of just rub the product upwards. So I'm doing the lightest motions ever. I like to basically go like where my hairline is and kind of just rub the bronzer there just to really warm up my face, as you can see. I also like to do my temples. So whenever you're doing your bronzer, you wanna make sure you're really getting it as close to your hairline as possible. That way it looks as natural as possible. There's nothing natural about this look, but you know what I'm saying, you get me. And then I'll rub the bronzer down to my neck so that nothing looks like crazy, you know? My trick for a natural contoured look is just taking any sort of like powder. So I'm gonna use the same one that I was just using from Wet n Wild. I'll take a small precise brush. This one's also from Wet n Wild. This is the P65. Take that. Chisel your cheeks out and right underneath that area, apply the powder. So it gives you like a little bit of a defined look, but it's still, you know, not as harsh as like actually going in and contouring. And then if you have to blend anything out, you just blend that out. All right, for blush, one of my current favorites is this one from Burt's Bees. This one's in the shade Bare Peach. I love this color. I go for peachy blushes more so than like pinky or mauve tones. It's just, for me personally, it's just what I love. I feel like it goes well with my skin tone and with the eye makeup, it's perfect. So when picking your blush, I would go with something that isn't too intense, but that kind of gives you that natural flush to your cheeks. Essence also has really great blushes. This one is from Ulta, Milani, Wet n Wild. Both have really great blushes. You don't want to do anything obviously too dark. It's going to give you that clown face. You want just something that's going to give you a natural wash of color. So I'm using this brush. It's from Isabella Scott. You can find these brushes like this at TJ Maxx. They're super affordable or Marshalls, Ross. Really great quality and I love this one so much because it's really like just a, your traditional duo fiber brush but it's so soft and big and fluffy and it's amazing. Do circular motions and I like to blend it up towards my bronzer. That way I don't have two circles of blush on my cheeks. All right, for highlighter, I know highlighting has really evolved over the years and it can be very overwhelming to see so much highlight. So today I'm gonna, I'm gonna try to go a little light-handed with my highlight. One of my all-time favorite highlighters is this one from Essence. It's the Pure Nude Highlighter and this one's in the shade Be My Highlight. This one is amazing. It doesn't look like much in the pan, but when you apply it, it gives you just this really natural kind of like glow from within. It's not too intense. It's not glittery. It doesn't have shimmer, nothing in it. It's just like a beautiful glowy sheen. I'm going to use this brush. Again, I'm loving these Wet n Wild brushes, you guys. They have like their kit available on their website. I've seen people talk about them that they got them at Walgreens, so just look around for them because they are incredible and they're such good quality. So you want to apply your highlighter right to the tops of your cheekbones above your brow just like this kind of in a C motion. Down the bridge of your nose a little bit. I like to really concentrate a lot on the tip of my nose. I don't know I think it looks cute. A little bit right on my cupid's bow. 
I think this looks really pretty, um, like very dewy, and I know if you have oily skin, obviously you don't like to do this, but sometimes I like to apply a little bit on my chin. With this highlighter, I feel like you can get away with it because, it's, like I said, it's not too intense, like, whatsoever. And that's pretty much it. What I'm going to do is go back into the same eyeshadow palette, and I always like to finish up the lower lashes at this point because you always want to have a balance in between your eyes. You don't want your eyes to look, like, really top-heavy, and then your bottom lashes just look like nothing. Like, it just... It doesn't look complete. So when it comes to an everyday look, I love just a traditional smoked out lower lash line. So one of my favorite brushes to do that with is the e.l.f. contour brush for the eyes. It's a really tiny domed brush. It's just take this color right in here that we were using in the crease, tap off the excess, and I'm just gonna literally smudge that right under there. I like to go a little bit lower than my lower lash line. Let me zoom in a little bit because I have those creases that I was talking to you guys about. So I feel like whenever I do this, it takes away from the creases because the eyeshadow is dragged down a little bit low. And whenever I am doing my shadow, I like to connect it with the top of my crease right up here because then it kind of just looks like it all comes together, you know? My favorite eyeliner is this one from Essence. It's the Silky Nude Eyeliner. I love this because it's a creamy nude. It's not white, so it's not too harsh on the eyes. It's just perfect for every single day. It really opens up your eyes and it gives you just a really nice appearance. So I like to always take the brush that I was using to set my under eye area or just a small brush like this. And I like to pull down because if you do it with a brush, it doesn't take off your makeup versus if you do it with your finger and you're pulling down on your eye. So I just pull down a little bit and then I just line my waterline. Then with the same brush that I was using to highlight my brow bone earlier, I'm going to take the same color and I'm going to apply it right in the inner tear duct. I actually want that to pop more, so I'm going to just spray my brush. Final thing you want to do always is apply some bottom lash mascara. Even if you have tiny lashes, I'm telling you this makes a huge difference. And this mascara is great because it's very voluminous, it's super black and it can make your tiny lashes stand out, I promise, because I have small lashes too. Okay, so when I apply my bottom lashes, just kind of a quick tip. I like to squint my eyes a little bit like this. See, I'm not squinting, now I'm squinting. And I will apply my mascara like this. And I don't know why, I don't know if it's just me, but I feel like it makes my eyelashes longer when I do it like this. Versus like, I mean, I still do that, but doing this really gives you like that long, lash look. Sometimes you get powder on the top of your lashes, so I'll just apply them, the mascara, kind of like rolling it off the top as well. For my lips, I love me a nude lip. The best lip liners that I've tried, or one of the best, are the NYX Slide On Glide On Lip Liners. They're creamy, they're pigmented, they're long wearing, they're amazing, and they have a ton of different colors. So, one of my favorites is in Nude Suede Shoes. It's just a perfect everyday pinky nude. It goes with like pretty much any lip color you can think of. Always make sure you're wiping off the foundation also on your lips because it's just not cute. And you don't wanna apply lip products over top of like cakey foundation because I feel like that can really accentuate imperfections on your lips. You see, it's just like the perfect lip liner. I'm gonna fill them in a little bit because when you line and fill them in, the lip liner really helps to prolong the other lip color that you put on over top. My current favorite lipstick is from Flower Beauty. This one's in the shade Warm Sand. You can find this brand at some Walmarts. Love this color. These are their matte lipsticks. These are very long wearing. They're creamy. They're super pigmented. And I just love how they're matte, but they're not drying on the lips like whatsoever. So I'm just gonna apply this. And that color, like I'm obsessed. All right, so the final thing I'm gonna do is go ahead and lock my makeup into place. A lot of people, like I mentioned earlier, have asked me about setting sprays versus primer sprays. Primer sprays are just that. They prime your skin, they don't really prolong your makeup. They just help for your foundation and stuff to go on better, to look better in general. So sometimes I will go in and just set my makeup with a primer spray because I feel like I need a little bit of like a pick-me-up, just something like a little extra, but I don't really wanna set my makeup. This does not make your makeup last. What makes your makeup last is something like a Wet n Wild matte setting spray, the Milani Make It Last, the Milani Make It Dewy. There's a ton. I have a whole video dedicated to my favorite setting sprays and I'll link it down below if you are interested. I'm gonna go ahead and use the Photo Focus Matte Finish Setting Spray. I've been really liking this lately. Wet n Wild is just killing it this year with their new products. I'm obsessed. 
All right, guys, so that completes this look. I really hope you enjoyed it. Please remember that you have to keep practicing to get good at things. You can't just do it once and expect to be perfect at it. We all started somewhere. I'm not perfect. I'm not a professional makeup artist. There's still a lot of things that I want to improve on, and that's just how makeup works. It's an art, and you got to keep practicing, and it really all comes down to how you use your products, not so much the type of products you use. So please don't get discouraged if you can't afford high-end makeup because I've seen bomb-ass makeup tutorials with affordable makeup and high-end makeup. So it's not about the products, it's about the technique. So just keep practicing, don't get discouraged. I believe in you. So, hope you guys enjoyed, and I'll see you in a few days in my next one. Bye.